Doodle Bud, today we're checking out this pen here. I mean, it's big, it's heavy, it's shiny. It's also called Asphine, uh, but thought we should check out if this pen's any good. Stay tuned. So today I'm gonna go through the pen. This is the V169, but I'm gonna do the video quite a bit different today, sort of in reverse. So uh, I'm gonna do the quick and dirty. For those who just wanna know what it looks like, how heavy it is, does it write well, I'll get that out of the way real quick, take maybe about three minutes, four minutes, something like that, give you a short, quick, dirty review on the pen. But if you wanna know the nitty gritty, get it deep, all the little details and some interesting flaws I found in the pen were a few tweaks and I think this could be an amazing pen. Uh, we're gonna stick with me and we'll go through those together. First up, a quick couple glam shots. So obviously a fairly pretty looking pen, all sorts of cool details. You got these cutouts, very shiny. It's a metal with acrylic, so it's quite substantial, quite heavy. I'll get it on the scale in a bit. I think it's uh, about 53 grams or something altogether and 20 or 20 plus are, are in the cap. It's a vacuum filler. Um, it's inked right now. So if you wanna see that stuff in action, you just gotta stick around a little bit longer. But it's got, I got it inked up. I'll do a writing sample on it. You can see the, the piston rod there. And we'll get to that pretty quick metal grip section. So it's one of those shiny, slick grip sections. But it is got this profile on it. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not wanting to slide off right away. It, it, it can stay there. But, you know, if you got greasy fingers, if you sweat a lot, whatever it is, uh, you don't like metal sections, you may not like that, but that is at least better. It's got the flare. It's got some half decent threads on here. Uh, I like those. It's a single start thread, but it turns on, I think uh, it's just over a turn. It's like a turn and a half. Let's see here. One, yeah, but one and three eighths of a turn. So that's pretty quick, pretty fast, which is nice. Let's get you close into the nib so you can see what that looks like. It's got the... Uh, F on there for fine and uh, the <laughs> company name on there too. Standard sort of looking nib, but it goes with the overall shininess uh, appeal of the pen if you like that. Quite a big knob here on the back to open and close the piston mechanism, the vacuum filling mechanism. You can see here, clear cap, we got a screw in the bottom. Um, clip, you know, nothing on the end as far as branding. Uh, there's so much stuff I'm missing that I'm going to go on big time about this pen for the quick and dirty generic one for the for those of you that have about a three minute attention span. But uh, we'll put pen to paper real quick, get the basic stuff over and done with, and then we'll get uh, we'll get talking about this pen. Continuing on with the quick and dirty, the pen is inked with some Robert Oster ink. This is a uh, Blue Water Ice, the purple sticker. What that is about, Vancouver Pen Shop. I go to the discount bin and pick up their inks where I get them on sale. So sweet deal. But let's get to it. We're inked up. This has a fine nib on it. So this is the, yep, that's fine. And this is the V169. It's a vacuum filler. Uh, all metal pen, steel nib, you know the deal. I, I gotta tell you one thing with this pen, right out of the gates, if you want a nice smooth writing experience, you don't have to worry. Uh, very, you know, fine, nicely tuned, the wetness is good. It's really good. You know, it's not crazy over the top, but it's just where it, it's, it should be smooth as smooth as you can get. It is uh, thicker. So for a fine nib, this is sort of like, here, let me get it out here. The Peter Draws, well, just normal in general, but this is the Peter Draws edition. This has a fine, uh, it's smooth as well, but the line thickness, these are almost identical. Let me put them side by side here. Do a little of that, do a little of this. Get you zoomed in. And uh, so you can see, those those two nibs are pretty much the exact same nib width. So um, one thing, if you want, you know, a finer nib on the narwhal, they write a little thicker. So this is following that same type of nib size. But as far as smoothness, wetness, reverse writing is very good as well. Um, yeah, you know, it's going to be a little bit off. But if you need to do some neat smaller printing with a lot less flow, it'll do that. 
uh, and even doing the old mango chutney. I didn't have to adjust this nib at all. This is just, whoops, out of the box. Uh, this thing just goes and goes and goes, and it, it's super smooth. So the writing experience with this pen is really good, really, really good. I think that the foundation is fantastic. The, uh, the flow, that feed, look how saturated this feed is. If we can see it, like it is fully saturated, has not had any problems. And that's actually with the piston here closed. It's probably due to open it because I've been playing with it. That's one thing with the back fillers, right? You got to open it, let some more ink come in or just write with it open. But uh, yeah, I haven't had this thing miss at all, miss a beat. So the overall main purpose of the pen, this thing does really well. Um, that's about the end of the basic review. Here's what the pen looks like. It's heavy metal. It writes really well. That's how you get ink in it. But let's get into some little details where um, there's a few little things. Nothing catastrophic to how the pen performs other than, well, one's a bit bad. Um, but these are the little things that they just tweaked a little bit, paid attention to. Uh, this pen would just be, you know, really fantastic. Of course, the price would have to go up a bit to do those things, but you didn't wouldn't have to go up too much. And I think this pen would be so much better. And so let's get into those. First of all, I just want to say by, by no means is this me ragging on this pen. This is just someone that comes from an engineering background, used to make like precision measurement equipment, um, dealt with instrumentation. And these little details make a massive difference. Now, of course, we're not doing like uh, submicron stuff here with these pens, but these are little things and they're easy to do. And these are just the differences that make an okay product or a great product. And some of them, like these things are free. So if anything, is if, if they happen to watch this video, I'm giving you a free like QC analysis on your products by someone who used to do this uh, for free. And I think if you take some of my advice, take it whatever you want it to be worth, uh, for free from this video, you can have a banging pen if you choose to look at some of the stuff. First on... Moon Man box, that's your name. Who's, whose pen is this? Whose box is this? That's a little odd that you have a different brand uh, box that your pen is coming in. So anyways, that's one little thing. Instructions, okay? The actual first, first you gotta take the pen out. Okay, box is okay, nothing too crazy. This spine is microscopically thin. Like I'm not gonna do it, but I could just probably rip this off, no problem, you do this a few times. Uh, maybe someone uses this every day. You don't know how often someone's going to use that. That could break over time and that could, you know, it's not the end of the world, but someone might get upset that it broke. The pen comes in this. It does come with this little sleeve to protect it. Okay, that's good. These pen holes. I can't, I can't get this pen out, man. Like this is a friggin' struggle. So you have tons of surface area here applying friction to this pen. This is a very dense foam. It's being pushed in. So you got tons of force and friction holding this in. It's not touching here anyways, just make the cutouts a little bigger so someone other than someone with tiny little fingers can get in there. And the whole box has no other language on it. It's all English, so I'm assuming this is for the North American market. So just I don't know where this pen's made, but you know, we were, we got bigger hands, okay? So just make those cutouts bigger. Um, Write and record your good life. It's the same. I imagine that, I don't know for sure, but that probably comes from another language and is translated. Uh, the translation into English is just, it's just a little off. It's not bad. It's not incorrect. It's just not 100% proper English. So maybe look into your translation. I'm going to show you some other examples in the instructions. Uh, box, that's all good. Barcode, that's nice. You scan it fast. Your label is a touch crooked. Doesn't affect the outcome of the pen, but these are little details. On here, on the instructions. Okay, that's good. Uh, but this this is, again, if this pen was made in Japan, okay, some of these details are going to show out. They, these details will be taken care of, I could promise you. Let's look at this. Okay, so here we are on the filling instructions. So this is the document the pen comes with. Someone makes this document, puts it together, does all the pictures and images, but let's zoom in. And uh, so this is just, you know, in the PDF or CAM, sorry, CAM file or drawing file, and they take it over and they put it into the instructions. But one thing, if you're doing, if you're really paying attention, all these pens would be side by side aligned, 
but let's put a straight edge, an edge of a paper across a common feature, and you can see we got different heights. That would not happen in a pen made in Japan or Germany. Okay, with, with the uh, instructions here, it says rotate and unscrew the rear cap, but then further down, you call it the tail cap. So you're changing the name of a part uh, on there as well. And then just um, you know, some of the translation, you know, unscrew the tail cap when you need to write a lot that's kind of off to make sure ink can flow into the grip well and write smoothly. So it's just not proper English. If you had, uh, I understand they might, English is probably not their first language. It's totally fine, but there's a difference between having a proper translator and the English on the English instructions would be perfect. So if you had a German pen, a Japanese pen, those are, you know, the, those are really high quality manufacturers. They don't speak English as their primary language, but the translations, and they do it in other in languages like Italian or Spanish or whatever, the translation on higher end equipment, not just pens, is always done properly. Another little thing I found interesting with this, if I look closer, which I tend to do, is this was actually printed on a printing press. To show you the detail, we're gonna use a little uh, microscope. Here we are zoomed in. This was done on a printing press, a four color press. So you can see the black, the cyan, magenta, and yellow dots that are on there. This was done with something called AM screening. That stands for amplitude modulation. So if you want to make a darker color, you just increase the size of the dots. So Larger dot means more ink, gets you more color in that area. The alternative way is called FM screening or frequency modulation. So you have a small dot, and if you want more ink, you would have more of those small dots, but this is done with what they call AM screening. So this is interesting. The instructions were done on a printing press. Now here we are on the A of the main logo on the instruction seat. You can see uh, just a bunch of artifacts on there. There should be a nice crisp A with crisp edges, but you can see lots of dots also in different colors. So there's two issues that could cause this. Either the imaging file isn't very clean and then the little dots are getting imaged around that A and, and they're getting printed on there, or the printing plates themselves uh, are possibly dirty and it's picking up some artifacts along the way and those are getting printed. Moving on to the pen itself. So it's an acrylic. And then you have, this is actually brass and uh, it's coated. So it's got like a chrome coating on there as well to give that appearance. But just overall, it's quite substantial. We're talking about 54 grams. The, the cap itself is what I think said over 20, uh, 21 grams, 21 and a half. So that's quite a heavy pen. As far as posting, it's not overly secure and it insanely back weights the pen, but it's big enough you don't need to. But a little thing like this, like this material is, there's so much material at the top of this pen. And the reason for that is the screw they're choosing. But a little choice like that. Now this thing's super top heavy. Now, if you put it on, bang on, it stays. But if you're off just a touch, Weeble Wobbles falls over. So this does fall over quite a bit because it's so top heavy. I understand at this price point, you have to use uh, a less expensive material to keep the price in check. It would have been nice if uh, they want to give it a go is do this, uh, possibly aluminum might work out. Uh, titanium would be great on that. Who knows, maybe something like magnesium, that'd be crazy. But if you can go lighter weight, that would be, uh, go a little bit longer on the pen. Now, if you like a heavy pen, you know, go for it. This will be right up your alley. But in general, this is a little bit heavy for pens and it doesn't need uh, to be this heavy, but I understand it. That's the price, that's the, you know, the compromise you have to make for price and, and materials as well. But the challenge too with uh, the coatings, it's quite slick, you can't control that. And uh, they're not the absolute best thing for corrosion resistance. Out of the gate, looking at the cap, your eyes aren't deceiving you. Uh, if we can get some focus, that clip is actually a little bit, little bit crooked. So that got missed. Um, another thing when you have these types of coatings, let's see if we can zoom in is when you have that touching the the body there if we can get oh i just i missed it there with the lighting but you can see right there that's already causing a little bit of a scratch on there and again that's just a bit of a choice with the design but then let's go into the pen there's a screw here at the bottom uh, i wouldn't have done that with that screw okay comes out all in one shot as the assembly the clip is uh is down in there and i guess this gets pressed on i'm not going to try to get that off too hard but so there's a few little things uh on here one it uh, it's captive so it has an o-ring on there which is nice but this screw 
So this one here, this looks like it's just a standard off the shelf screw they found. Maybe it gets made, but I wouldn't go with a plated screw. You should just go straight stainless steel because eventually the plating, you know, it's not 100%. If you have a slight little flaw where someone gets in there with a screwdriver, even though, even though if they shouldn't like me, but if they do, uh, that is in the cap and you have ink in the pen, you get condensation, you have moisture on here and that can rust out. The other thing too is, you know, it's quite long and that's, that's the reason we got so much headspace up there. So if you had a custom screw, I don't know if this is custom or not, but if you had a, you could do a shorter screw with a finer pitch on that thread, which would allow you to get rid of some of this material here on top and make it not so top heavy. But I do like the O-ring, it's captive, so the thing doesn't fall apart. Another thing on here is, I don't think this is supposed to come out so easy because there is some glue. They glued this on, if we can look in there. So here's the glue that was on here. It's supposed to glue these two together. Now, it looks like there's some surface preparation here. There's this little channel here. They, they machined a groove in there by the looks of it. So this edge stops stop this from going all the way down, which is just fine. Um, looks like that was roughed a little bit or something. You can see the glue. The glue is bonding to here. Now, they didn't rough it everywhere. So you can see it's sort of glazed. But in certain areas, it did adhere quite nicely to this acrylic, but there was no surface preparation done on the inside. So the glue just, it's not gonna stick to chrome. You have to rough that up uh, and prepare the surface properly if you want the glue to even have a chance of sticking. Now, while the pen is apart, I figured I might as well have showed you this. So I uh, just opened the pen the other day real quickly for a previous video I did. This is part of my two penner. Uh, and when I first popped the pen out, I took the cap off and I thought, oh, let's just see, let's take the cap off. And the cap didn't come off. What happened is the cap and the body were stuck together and the section came off. Now, it looks kind of cool. Is it screw cap or is it post? Is it snap cap? It's a screw. Oh, all right. Let's just see. I'm curious. Ugh. Okay. How does it even... That's a lovely feature. Already, that's going to be in the review. <laughs> No. I'm not going to do this while the pen is inked to show you because obviously I don't want ink everywhere but there's a little clearance uh, flaw they had a tiny little design flaw in here that's causing that so what they got inside the pen you can see here they got this little step that's turned uh, into the acrylic now what that's supposed to do is seal up against the edge here to uh, seal off the nib there's the o-ring to prevent it too so it, the idea is really good they're on to something and then what it's supposed to do, if you see there, it's supposed to bottom out and seal and those two surfaces mate. One, I would make that step uh, bigger. They got lots of clearance room and this is a very large shoulder. So they got room for more room. But the problem is in this area right here. So I might have to do a drawing to show it, but you can see there's this little ramp up here and then you got the cap here. So when this turns all the way down, what happens is you actually are creating a wedge effect. So they're act, they're making contact now. This isn't fully on here tight, uh, pardon for the crusty fingernails. Uh, they're not on 100% tight, so you gotta tighten the pen a little bit more. And now what happens is this surface and this surface are touching. These shouldn't touch, those shouldn't be touching, but now you're creating a wedge effect on it and you're getting a pretty decent mechanical gripping advantage to uh, make it easier to break the threads on the section and the body versus overcome the frictional fit between the threads of the cap and the pen body as well. So that those shouldn't be touching. There should always like for the for pen caps, if it's not a flush mount, like say here, here's my Mont Blanc, uh, you could see it goes over top. There's some relief so that doesn't happen. Now this doesn't come apart here, but on some other pens it does, let's say on this Pilot A23, you can see it's a clearance. It's not going against it. Even on the narwhal, um, it's super close, it might even be touching, it's debatable, but it's similar design here. They do have that collar in here, and you can see it's a little more substantial. They got a stainless screw down there, that's the difference. But at least there is more force um, in these threads here, so that this doesn't come apart. Now it looks like when I do tighten it down, it does appear these two do, do touch into each other, but at least the frictional force that's creating is less 
than the force on these threads and the body. So this won't uh, won't come undone. So that's just a little tiny miss they did there. This this part just has to come back like uh, two tenths of a millimeter, something like that. Because if we grab this uh, Opus 88, so it works the exact same way, right? So it, the cap bottoms out on that collar in that step in the cap, but they left a little bit of a relief. Let's zoom in so you can see. You can see just that little bit of daylight right there. If we can get some nice respectable focus, you can see there's a little relief. Coming back to that screw, I did take a look and uh, get rid of some of the plating. It is brass, so it's most likely a custom screw, but the sucker does weigh, you know, almost two grams just for that screw. So it's a nice beefy screw, but you don't need a beefy screw for what you're doing. You could, you can get it much shorter. You don't need that many threads engaged and just a different design that would save you a little bit of weight. So taking the pen apart further, cleaned it out. Uh, the section screws out friction fit with the nib and feed. These go in quite nice. The threads are good on here. I, I think that they're a really good job. They got an O-ring for proper sealing. So that's all good. We have a stainless steel uh, piston rod on here. Now this is one little nitpick. Again, you wouldn't see this on a higher end brand. So they machine, <laughs> focus, there we go. Uh, they machine a flat on there. Maybe that's better if you can see it that way, okay? But they should have gone in a bit more with that flat because now you got threads on it. That's just, if you're going to have a flat, have a flat go down an extra half a millimeter aside or whatever you need to do and actually go down on the flat metal instead of what will happen. You put a wrench on there to undo it and you're going to round those edges of these other existing threads over and mush it up a little bit. So just have a proper flat if you're going to machine that down. Okay, rest of this comes apart pretty good. There we go, we got the uh, the piston there. It does have a little extra shutoff valve, so when it's bottomed out and goes into the section over here, this O-ring comes in and should seal stuff off. So that way, if you uh, keep it all closed down, you should only have the reservoir that's in here so the thing leaks or something like that. If you take this on a plane, it shouldn't fly out. But I think I'm gonna test that anyways, because I can do that over here. We got double O-rings, so good idea. And uh, there's this little collar here, the step down, if we can get, again, focus on there, into the acrylic. So that's gonna mate into this part. We have a proper recess. Again, the lighting's not so good. I got the, I forget what color this was, but it's not quite the clear. It's like a silver gray sort of thing going on, which I, I, I like, I think it looks all right. But it's gonna bottom out on there. So that's all good. The, uh, the machining on these parts, are pretty decent. Um, I like that we got stainless. Here we got the uh, the O-ring on there and, and how that goes on. So with these pens, I would just put a little bit of grease on this every now and then. If you're gonna take it apart like I did here and service it, not too bad. Little sh sharp edge, they could have broken that edge a touch better on there, but nothing too crazy. Uh, but overall, the, the, the filling mechanism seems to be in there pretty well. I'm gonna put this back together uh, and give you some closing thoughts. Actually, while I'm at it as well, so apparently this is um, this is done by hand, according to the video description. So they're all slightly different, which is interesting. Um, the, it's not too bad, but there are some of them have occasional kind of sharp edges, sharp burrs. Um, you could put this into something called like a vibratory finisher that has these little ceramic media in there, different designs and whatnot that might help just get in there because that's a lot of work if you want to remove those edges by hand you can put it on a buffing wheel too that'll do it but then getting the inside edges is trickier so maybe this goes into a vibratory finisher before you send it out for plating and would just make those edges yeah like this one right here that's pretty sharp you know i could uh you know take my nail off with that one so you don't want that you could doubles as a nail file but there we are taking off some uh some of my fingernail on that edge so a little bit sharp Again, on a uh, just someone who cares a little bit more, not that they don't care, but just someone who pays a little more attention to detail, I should say, would notice that and make a little correction. So one little note with this pen, if you do take it apart, you know, you, you wanna put a couple dabs of grease on that piston so it's nice and smooth, it's pretty decent. I don't think this is flimsy, it's pretty good. Um, because we have this little friction issue now, again, it could be different from pen to pen. It's it's so close that 
Uh, I don't know what the tolerance is on these parts, what they can hold, but another pen might not have that issue. So what you want to do is have as much friction here as possible to overcome the friction you're going to get here in that little wedge effect that's kind of working against you. So um, I know there's O-rings on here. Actually, I, you don't really take the grip section off too much, so you don't have to worry about wear and tear with this pen really anyways. You just plunge it, get your ink, plunge it to clean it out. Um, so maybe just don't put grease on those while you're servicing things, uh, maybe on the O-ring itself, but uh, on these mating threads here, I wouldn't put any grease there just because that will um, maybe increase the likelihood of this separating from the body. And especially if this thing's filled, you're not paying attention, ink just coming out and having a problem. Okay, I think we got the shot. Drive this down. Ah. Wasn't in deep enough. Dip it in, we'll see if we can get enough contrast. Yeah, you can sort of see through the pen there. Put it into your ink, drive this down. Boom, there you go. Ink shoots up into the pen. So that about wraps it up for the quick and dirty, you know, three, four, five minute, whatever review that was at the start. If you stay to the end to get all the detail, those are the details. Now, the reason I did it in particular with this pen Okay, now I don't do this with all pens, but I thought this deserved to go deep because this pen writes really, really, really well. Uh, the writing experience with this is fantastic. It's really, this is probably one of the best writing pens I've had um, at this price point and also for price points way higher than this. So they got the number one thing that people want in a pen probably the most is how well it writes. It's got a great ink delivery, holds lots of ink. Um, and all that stuff. So the reason I went into this is those the changes I suggested, some little things, I know they're nitpicks, but I think if they made a few of those changes, yes, in the instructions and maybe cleaning up their printing file, little things that they mentioned with translation, and then some actual details of the pen. If you, a lot of those are easy, like just fixing a couple of those things. Like I said, that's a one and done. You do it once, now all of them are right. Um, same with a little design change there. You do that once, make that little correction. Now all the pens are in there. So that little correction you have to do isn't a very large expense. The biz biggest expense to improve it, uh, one, I would you know not do a brass screw. So maybe that's an extra 50 cents or something uh, for production side. Again, I put it back together, this clip, there's something going on with the design there. It wants to kick over. So fix that. The biggest one I would say is if they could do a lighter, weight so you got to cut some weight on this sucker um brass is just going to be too much you need some lighter weight play around with i don't know if aluminum will be able to hold it but um yeah it's just a little too heavy i would say for the for the masses it's okay once you uncap but that is quite heavy and that knob is quite heavy so if you could shed some weight off the pen which would be easy to do with just change the material but i understand the price would have to go up um i think it'd be worth it make those little changes first. So this is now like pretty much perfect. And if people really rave about it, but go, it's just a bit too heavy. Um, you know, again, you could throw a, a titanium version of this pen, but I really like the performance of the pen. The looks is cool. You might, I mean, that's subjective. It's, you may or may not like it, but I think the, the guts, the main core of this pen, they're doing a fantastic job on that. Uh, just a few tweaks to the outer packaging and you can have a fantastic pen. So this brand, actually, I'm interested to see what they come up with because for this price point, you know, this competes, I would say, a lot with uh, a Narwhal pen, very similar in size and all that stuff. But I showed you just a little thing like that screw with the little clearances, a couple little things, the clip is straight, little details. You can sell the pen for a bit more and those costs aren't huge. So there we go. Really fun pen writes phenomenally well. Thanks for watching. Love to hear your comments, subscriptions, likes, you know the deal. We'll catch you next time.